This is Dr. Krause with another Python for Engineers video. I want to talk about basic syntax and for loops. Um, this is in no way a comprehensive basic Python tutorial. There are lots of those on the internet. I'm just trying to help an engineering student who's probably already been exposed to some different programming languages get up to speed quickly in Python. So for example, if I was comparing Python to the C language, uh, one big change, no need for semicolons to end your lines. Python is gonna assume most lines of code are only one line long, and it'll use a special character, a backslash, if you want to express that code is more than one line. Uh, Python is dynamically typed, so you're not having to declare your variables ahead of time. So for example, if I was trying to assign the value of seven to A, in C, I've got to declare the type of A, I've got to have semicolons at the end of every line, in Python that is one line. Uh, another thing that's a little bit weird about Python if you're new to it, but ultimately becomes a really nice and clean thing, Python is white space delimited, so tabbing in and tabbing out is how you specify the body of a for loop, and then the end of, so the body of a for loop would be tabbed in, and then at the end of the for loop you would just tab back out. You don't have an end for, you don't have the curly bracket thing that C does. So white space really matters in Python, whereby white space, if you're not familiar with that, I just mean on a white piece of paper, anything that would print out as blank. So we could be talking about tabs or new lines or spaces or whatever, all of those would fall into the white space category. So you can use either spaces or tabs to indent a function or an if statement or a for loop or whatever. And like I said, when you get to the end of that statement, you tab back out. And then each of those statements would have a colon on the first line before you tab in at the beginning of an if statement or the beginning of a function or the beginning of a for statement. So for example, a for, state, a for loop in Python, I've got for i in range five. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but range five basically means create a list or in Python three, actually an iterator that would return the values zero, one, two, three, four and stop at four and start at zero. So five is the length of a zero indexed list of numbers. Um, I have a colon and then I indent for the body of my for loop and then this line would get executed five times for i equals zero through four and then I outdent or tab out or whatever and then this line is the end is after the end of the for loop so I'll do a quick demo of that in just a minute so if I was going to just print the numbers zero through four in either C or Python with C I've got to do some include stuff um, I've got to have a main function I've got to declare I probably don't need that equal one, probably want that to be equal zero or just not at all. So when it comes down to the for loop, it gets, so I has to be declared as a type. And then I have this statement of start with I equal this. Here's my ending condition. Here's my incrementing condition, whatever. And then do the printf thing. And then this is what happens after the for loop. Whereas in Python, it's for I in range five. So range five implies start at zero, end at four increment by one. You can optionally specify the start of a range to be something other than zero. And then you just print this thing out and then this is what happens after the for loop. And so again, no curly brackets, just tab in and tab out. So let's, um, again, I think the Python for loop is a beautiful but slightly weird thing. Maybe beautiful is too strong. But if I had this code, let's first of all just execute this live and show that I'm not making this stuff up. So it prints i equals zero, one, two, three, four, and then it prints after the for loop. So this is executed each time. And as I mentioned, right. So in Python three, that's actually an iterator. So if I specifically said, show me that list corresponding to that, it's a list of numbers zero through four. So the other thing that could be a little weird about a Python for loop, again, I, I don't know. To me, Python for loops were a little weird at first, and then after I got into them, they seemed to be a really, really powerful thing. So if I had some list, first of all, notice that this is a string, three strings and a number, so a list is not necessarily an array. Um, NumPy certainly provides you with an array class, and you can do powerful things with that, but a list can be mixed data types. But the really weird thing um, about a Python for loop is, uh, let me do it this way first. So I'm just gonna print the item in the list. And so for item in my list automatically increments over the list in the for loop. That would be the equivalent of doing for i, uh, let's do this. So if I said n was equal to the len 
of my list. Um, n is equal to 4. And so I could say for i in the range of n, um, item is equal to my list of i, and I can go get that item out of the list, and then I could print i equals percent d comma item equals percent s, and I would then substitute i and item into there. So this I would consider to be a more C style for loop where I explicitly am specifying the I that I want. I'm using that I then to grab an item out of a list or an array and then I'm printing I and item. That's fine and it works and it probably makes more sense to a lot of people but this is unnecessary and something you could easily screw up. I had to explicitly find out what the length of the list was so on and so forth. This um, accomplishes essentially the same thing without ever exposing I. It's shorter. Um, I guess if I wanted it to look more similar, I could do that. Um, I think that's much, much cleaner. There's less to screw up. There's less steps. There's less typing. Uh, but the only drawback of this approach well, two drawbacks. One, if you're new, it kind of looks a little weird and, and takes a little getting used to. Two, I don't explicitly have access to I. And if I needed that to substitute from one list to another or something, um, I don't have it. So the thing that would be even slightly weirder, but also more powerful, I could do for I comma item in Python has a function specifically to solve this problem. Um, and it's called enumerate. And so enumerate does the exact same thing on a list, but also explicitly exposes that index. So if I run this code, I'm getting i and item each time through the for loop. So the first time through i equals zero, item is equal to a, which makes sense if we go back to, let me just echo my list so we can see what we're talking about on the same screen. Second time through, i is equal to one, item is equal to b, Third time through, i is equal to 2, item is equal to 7. Fourth time through, i is equal to 3, item is equal to hello. So this code replaces all of this, including the n equals my list. So it's just cleaner and easier, and you're not having to remember to do ah, that to specifically index the list or array. You don't have to know the length of the list. So be aware that this um, kind of automatic iteration over a list is really clean in Python. And if for some reason you needed to access the index integer, you would use the enumerate function. Thanks.